hey guys welcome back to the channel we've got another legend style video for you guys today where i'll be going through super bolo smash as always the army link will be in the description and um yeah let's just have a look at how it's been going so far it's been going decent like um this day the the previous day was not so great on offense but what can you do it's just a lot of close misses not the best cracks uh, but it's fine we get away with it uh, so yeah, let's just uh, get into some attacks where I help you guys understand what you can do on some annoying bases that you start finding in Legend League. Alright, for our first for our first base over here, we've got a diamond base. I'm pretty sure that these poison towers are supposed to be rage towers. But given the root rider meta at, in Legends League at Town Hall 16, I, I don't blame these people for switching away from Rage Towers. Poison Towers are probably your best bet to defend Root Riders, but we've got Super Bowlers. So again, like um, we're just going to kind of walk through what it is that we can do to, uh, to kind of like smash bases like this, because obviously this is a well spread out base. Uh, you can see like the damage is mostly in this arc over here. And for diamond bases there are like three different approaches that i've talked about and we're going to go through the feasibility of each of the three of them so one of the approaches is um where i try to have a flame flinger go for the area behind the town hall but i only usually do that if there is a spell tower behind the town hall that i can possibly get rid of so over here the value is not very insane for a flame flinger behind the town hall i will only get one multi uh, one multi in front of honestly not enough for me so that, let's just discard that option for now and let's uh, view the other options that are available so one other option is um trying to push our bowlers through this arc like this somehow so that would somehow mean um creating a funnel over here a very small funnel over here it can be even something like we send our queen like this over here and we can push our bowlers and then have like a jump like this to get into a core. It is definitely possible. Um, and usually for this, we try to also send a blimp for the town hall while popping the warden ability around over here. It is definitely possible. I'm not saying it's not possible, but um, the funnel requirements are a little tough because there's a lot of open walls over here. So if you want to experiment with it, you can definitely go for it. Um, that being said, I'm going to go for third approach, which um, is basically like the far end of entry for the bowlers. And this can involve either a log launcher or a flame flinger. So now over here, I'm going to be using the flame flinger because the expos are not protecting um, some value as best as they possibly can. <clears throat> and what I mean by that is, uh, you can see I've started my warden over here and I want to send my bowlers in like this. So what I can do over here is like the warden walk is going to continue over there. But now just look at how I'm going to place my flame flinger. I'm going to place it very greedily and I'm going to I'm going to make my flame flinger grab this much of value. So that's literally all three of these buildings. They're going to be gone. And my warden is able to get the enemy queen as well on top of that expo. So honestly, I can't really ask for much more. This is going to shape up wonderfully. And all in all, let's just see what kind of a funnel this is going to create. So I'm going to drag my Warden away as soon as he gets the Expo. So the Warden has done this much of a funnel. The BB Dragon is doing this much. And of course, we have the Flame Flinger dealing with like, okay, not the Expo. But up, you can see it's approximately shaping up to be this much of the base is going to be taken care of uh, at this point in time. And you can see I've already gotten a Wall Breaker to break this edge over here. And there's something very, very interesting that I want you guys to note about this base. Um, this wall over here is not breakable actually because of these two compartments over here That's right. Um, and I have been talking about making an entry with the bowlers from over here. So how can I possibly do that? <laughs> I'm going to have to somehow clear all of this out and allow my bowlers to actually enter in over here And you're gonna see a very interesting way. I'm gonna do that I'm gonna make sure the bowlers have nowhere else to go but into this compartment so let's just see that in action really quick. Uh, you probably already guessed it. On these entries, I love to use my queen to set the funnel. And um, that's going to set this up so beautifully for us. I'm just going to use a skeleton spell because why not? It's just a monolith. It's free. And you're going to see what I'm going to do over here. So I'm I'm starting to sprinkle wall breakers to target this wall open. And um, 
these guys should get stuck around the monolith for a while and just look at what the queen managed to do in in this duration so now just have a look at the base um the flame flinger has done what it's supposed to do and the queen has actually cleared out so much of the base that this is now the next nearest building for the bowlers and you're gonna see everybody just turn right back because there's nowhere else for them to go uh they're gonna try to like walk around a bit over here and there sure uh, my healers are taking the damage right now so I was just waiting for my troops to come a bit ahead so they can start tanking the beans of the inferno and that's why I froze the inferno to kind of reset it uh, and yeah uh, my queen has been sacrificed now but she has done what was needed to be done like honestly not really much else for me to do uh, this jump is this jump is pretty self-explanatory I just need access to the town hall and the flame thing has already handled this entire area over here so I can position it a bit more to the right to help get some bounces in this area to support the royal champion and yeah all in all this is looking pretty good you can see how it shapes up first those bowler bounces almost take the town hall down but it doesn't matter because I've only just now popped my wall ability when there's literally almost nothing left just this one last little area but <laughs> I've got my giant gauntlet still fully intact like my king is literally at full health so He's tanked the defenses for just long enough and there's no way that this base is going to defend this now. So yeah, a good plan. Uh, interesting use of wall brick. So uh, I just took advantage of the fact like, okay, this is a void compartment. The queen can easily clear out this entire area and that should force the bowlers from here back onto this side. There was no reason for me to uh, take these buildings out with my warden because I can easily get this double wall break down to just send them back on like that. Um, I know what my key, I know that my queen is capable of funneling out this entire area over here because um, she has a lot of DPS and she has a unicorn to keep her alive. So it's perfectly fine to just sacrifice her for that funnel because look at what it did for us. It set us up so beautifully for this attack and that is a nice triple for us. All right, we'll get on to the next one. Okay, our next base over here is an anti to ring style base, I guess. Um, and I'm sure many of you have seen this layout actually like you can see it anywhere ranging from like low legends to high legends and um, You're gonna see I'm going to do something very uh, Slightly I'm not gonna say very maybe it's like slightly different uh, because I'm going to really really abuse the power of the flame finger for this uh, for this one um, <clears throat> So our usual approach on bases like this is going to be something like okay Hey, like just warden on warden walk like this Maybe have a flame flinger like this, just send your smash in the middle, right? But the problem with bases like this is, while the core does have a good amount of um, defenses for you to try to take down, there's actually a lot of stuff left behind uh, your NTF approach. And you can look at this from any angle, honestly. Like if I, if I approach from this edge, I would have the enemy royal champion, queen warden, and this merge defense over here. Uh, maybe even the ricochet cannon could give me trouble, I don't know. But you, you can just pause and analyze the base. Like, it doesn't matter which side you approach from, this is going to be the case anyway. And we don't even know where the locations of the Teslas are. They're usually hidden somewhere in this inner ring over here beside um, that innermost wall. And they're filled with all sorts of skeleton traps as well to give you as much trouble as possible for your heroes. So, um... First things first, I noticed were the expos were not set on ground for some reason. They were all set to air. And that means that the range of these things is like if as long as the flame flinger is not literally targeting them, I'm safe. I'm not going to have to worry about them. And I just took advantage of that fact because look at this entire corner over here. Free for a flame flinger. There's nothing that's going to stop me. I just need to scout for skeleton traps and Teslas. And um, that's it. My flame flinger is good to go. So if I'm going to do this, because I know my flame flinger is going to be able to grab like a huge chunk of the base, uh, rather than using the flame flinger to funnel um, over here. So if, uh, maybe if what what would I would what I would have normally done is okay, like the flame flinger is going to get this value. I'm just going to ward and walk over here and then send my smash over here. But what I'm trying to tell you is that. I know that my flame flinger is capable of getting just more than this much. I'm saying my flame flinger can get this much of the base. So instead of um, going close to the flame flinger on this one, um, I've decided I decided that I would uh, go. I would send my smash 
from the opposite corner of the flame flinger so i can let it do its thing get as much value as it possibly can because remember remember like the siege needs no spell support nothing you just place it maybe look at it once in a while try to make sure there's no traps and if it stays alive without taking any damage it can just take out like maybe quarter of the base for you literally so um you'd have to take complete advantage of that fact and what i started doing was i started setting up a funnel to come in from this side why because i'll deal with the monolith early there's no uh, that's the absolute he hero killer for the back end and of course i'll get this early cc pool before i even enter the town hall compartment so uh let's just see this in action I'm pretty sure you guys may have seen smashes like this before, but in case you haven't, I, I hope that this becomes an interesting use case for you. Definitely try to find when your flame flinger can get more value than simply setting a funnel. And um, in those cases, you should probably go for more um, very greedy flame flingers and try to exploit their value as much as you can. Because if I use the flame flinger to funnel over here, uh, it would likely go towards the enemy queen and uh, probably just get taken out at half of its health. So you can see I'm using the warden to clear out this much and then I'm going to try to set a funnel to come in over here with the help of my king and queen. So I'm hoping that I'm going to literally sacrifice my king over here, use his giant gauntlet early so that he can like take out this much of the base and that should set us up nicely to come in from over here. Um, yeah, just a few barbarians. I didn't even use my yeti um, for the mortar at the bottom of the base. So. You can see how this is going to shape up really nicely for us. The Yeti is just coming in to kind of set the funnel to ensure that the king goes inside this area uh, to keep the bowlers in this tight lane over here. So let's just see that in action. And I'll, I'll just fast forward through this part. Uh, so you can see like the flame finger is getting a good amount of value as I was talking about before. It's it's moved on to the raised arch, uh, merged archer tower and it's actually going towards the eagle now and nothing is going to even be able to stop it. And you can see this funnel is being set up so nicely. We've got the wall break for this wall over here. We're raging up and <laughs> there's literally nothing the base can do because uh, those ice golems are being fought in, fought in complete safety. Uh, sure, my jump is placed in such a way such that my bowlers are not going to be able to take it. Uh, because they actually took out the scatter shot with the rage bounces so they're all gonna mostly wrap around over here now uh, but once again i'm here to tell you that that's completely fine because <laughs> look at this flame flinger there's no way that this base can really stop you those bounces are just dealing so much damage in the core we've still got our king's phoenix up all you have to do is maybe try to just help him out a little bit it doesn't honestly matter too much because just look at look at what's left on the base even if my healers are taking like a lot of damage right now it doesn't really matter i still got to de deploy my royal champion and my queen is still with ability as well so even if the town hall had not gone down to my king this would have been a triple a very easy triple there's no way this base would have defended at this point because even my king uh, like managed to pull all the ground traps and it's pretty overwhelming like it was Nothing went in the core, but I still got this triple. And that's the power of just using your flame finger to get more value than simply using it as a funneling tool. So do try to be greedy in certain situations with it. I'm sure you can exploit a huge chunk of the base away with it. Just watch out for those uh, things. You can easily get some triples with a lot of mistakes like I made in this attack. Okay, for our next base, we've got an extremely extremely large core um, which is obviously very very toxic but um, what this tries to do is try it, it basically it's so large that uh, it tries to make your troops clump up together in a way um, such that uh, suppose my troops clumped up over here and this area was not taken care of they could have like heavy fire raining on me while my troops would not be trying to take those defenses down at all and um, if my troops split again same argument because my troops are splitting my healers cannot keep up and they will easily mow down anything that's trying to chew through this base so you have to be very careful with your spell usage spell timing hero ability timing as well all three of these things are extremely important on bases like this and uh, most importantly probably for bowlers um once again you just need to use your siege to the best ability as possible and you're probably already noticing like the theme of this video is shaping up to more or less be um, efficiently using your flame flingers 
and I'm once again going to tell you your flame flinger is much more than a funneling tool and we're going to go for a very niche approach uh, not a niche approach we're going to go for a very um, naive approach uh, that I'm sure everybody is everybody knows like you just have like, a flame finger to funnel and a warden walk to funnel and then you can just send in your smash over here i've just chosen um the top side because uh, i prefer the eagle artillery when the monolith and eagle are separated apart like this um but if you guys are more comfortable going through the monolith feel free to do that it's uh it's definitely your choice um but you can see over here i'm just shaping it up such that the flame finger actually look at the angle at which i've deployed the flame finger uh, instead of deploying the flame finger over here, uh, I deployed it. I deployed it further over here because. Uh, okay, I'll zoom in like this a bit more. This ground X bow is not going to be able to target my X bow. Uh, it's not going to be able to target my flame finger while I'm targeting this area. I can get the. I can get some damage on the multi inferno, the ricochet cannon, and maybe even the scatter shot. I'm not very sure. It depends on how the flame finger decides to path around, but. Because this X bow is not touching this ricochet cannon, I can definitely start getting some damage onto the ricochet cannon area without ever being targeted. So that is going to be huge for us. And you can see like the path I'm trying to create for the bowlers will come in over here. It's mostly focused on the right side of the base. And our flame finger is going to do much more than set a funnel. It's going to help us also with the left side of this ridge core area. And um, yeah, let's just see that in action. Once again, I'll just fast forward this little bit because there's not really much happening over here. I've just uh, dropped the Yeti to tank the mortar. Um, this is also important on bases like this. I'm using the baby dragon to kind of thin out this area to encourage the bowlers to go over here a bit further because I'm going to have to place my jump spell on this warden statue. Um, the bowlers will actually try to walk around over here a bit. So try to thin out this area which the flame finger uh, is failing to get and that should help your bowlers uh, get into the core much faster. And you can see, like I've dropped my queen, uh, she is going to immediately join up back um, to where my entry point is, uh, because I absolutely do not want any buildings to left uh, to be left on the other side over here, because even like having my bowlers delay by like half a second or one second, it can it can be the difference between a one star and a three star, honestly, on bases like this, because there's just so much of damage. And as I was saying before, your timing on your hero abilities, spell placement, spell timing, everything has to be immaculate. And we're even getting frozen up so badly in the score over here. You can already see it. But uh, you saw that my one bowler actually split, split off to the left side. But with the help of the flame finger, everybody's regrouping up to the right side of the base. And this flame finger is going to continue to get insane value on the left side. Like, just look at that. Everybody is stuck on the right side. Uh, but flame finger we helped it out uh, by deploying it uh, a bit more greedily a bit uh, over here so that it can uh, get deeper into the core and help us out and you can see this is about to become a triple as well i've just uh, pre-placed my poison over here for the uh, enemy queen maybe some skeleton traps in the area it doesn't really matter too much but yeah that's another triple for us so once again do be greedy with your flame fingers try to spot those uh, uh, spots for value and uh, don't necessarily always use them as a funnel tool if you can be greedy with your flame flingers go for it if you if you see that value and if you feel if you feel you can protect your flame finger well enough such that they can live like 100 percent of their lifespan or somewhere close to it go for it and uh, definitely do not interfere with your flame flinger try to send your smash away from uh, the flame flingers area so that the flame flinger can get its full potential rather than wasting time traveling around uh, from defense to defense so yeah, let's just hop into one last attack for you guys and uh, we'll call it a wrap. All right, one more anti two star style base for this uh, last one over here. And you can see the core is once again, extremely, extremely compact. But the difference over here is that once again, we don't know where the traps are. And no matter where you try to approach it from, you're going to have a difficult backend. Say I approach, if I approach from over here, I'm going to have a combination of a single inferno with a multi inferno and of course like I'm there's no guarantee that this corner is going to be taken down as well so overall it could be a little bit difficult we also have the enemy royal champion similar argument for if I try to approach from this side um, we're going to have this entire area left 
and so is uh, this area as well uh, and you can also see that there's not necessarily very good bounces so to ensure that the single in front is going to go down because of how isolated it is we do not have any guarantee of what the situation is for traps in this area uh, because we are going to be very weak uh, after we get out of the score so any uh, traps that are accumulated over here are definitely going to like be huge uh, a huge trouble for us uh, in combination with the single inferno just absolute hero killers left for us no matter how we try to approach it even if we try to approach um from like this angle you you can obviously see like i've i've <laughs> you can analyze it for yourself like this is going to be a difficult base no matter what it is that we do so i'm going to combine two tricks over here uh one being the greedy flame finger that i was talking about uh, this entire video and another is using your queen to funnel uh, yeah, I I very rarely use my queen to funnel on anti two star uh, bases like these. I love sending her into the core, but I don't have too much of a choice. I'm going to need to exploit her ability to the fullest so that I can handle these heavy things uh, over here. Heavy heroes, monolith. Uh, overall, it's just a lot of damage that could prove to be difficult to get through. So let's just see it in action. Um, what I thought about for this one is I can have a warden starting from over here because naturally I was just thinking of parting through like this and the queen can go in uh, from the bottom like that and actually because my fl because my bowlers are going in from over here I was thinking why not just have a flame flinger starting over here so it could um, yeah I even dropped a wall breaker over there so it could start parting in like this and it could start damaging up this area behind the town hall where i'm going to be approaching from anyway so that was mostly my idea and um, let's just <laughs> let's just see it in action there's really not much to the plan over here i don't really want my warden to get the single in front it's not too it's not too important for me uh, but you can see like this funnel is already shaping up very very well and once that gets set you can see like i've dropped the yeti i've dropped the king, uh, queen the yeti just helps a little bit uh, by providing a, like some assistance to the queen you could say and um yeah let's just see this in action the skeleton spell it's not really doing much i hoped it is tanking the skeleton uh, it's, it's tanking the single inferno but let's just see this in action this should be a really fun one because the gauntlet is going to get amazing value and that flame finger as i was saying it's able to support us um it's taking care of the single inferno which is huge because that would have actually been pinging at us from behind and the queen is doing an amazing job of also keeping the bolus right in the core couldn't have asked for anything better uh as, as i was saying i'm going to have to use her ability i don't really have much of a choice and um yeah my bolus have all died out there's nothing left in the core no healers no bolus it's just my king on phoenix and what do you know let's let's see who's saving the day for us it's the flame finger once again because as i was saying it's um got the single inferno for us it's got the multi inferno um the archer um the archer queen went to ability and she is taking care of all the enemy heroes around over there and i've only just now dropped my royal champion to help uh, the queen out as well and now the flame finger is just going to go right into cleanup so if uh, i had placed my flame finger to actually funnel uh, over here that would mean that i would have had this combination of a single inferno and a multi inferno over here actually and look at look at my situation now i don't have my rc ability i do not have my queen ability and once again we do not know what the traps are in this area either so imagine if like a bunch of skeleton spells just popped around literally right now as i was going to go into the last few defenses that would have been left uh, i would have been probably not be i would have probably not finished this base off the way i did but <laughs> luckily for me i didn't have to use my cc troops because the flame flinger got rid of two multi infernos for me it kind of helped out a little bit with the funnel like the warden did this much the flame flinger did this much and my queen easily set up this path over here like this and that forced the bowlers in this very tight lane and they nicely took care of most of the core just just enough such that the flame flinger managed to handle the rest of the base all by itself so yeah i hope this was a good tutorial for you guys on how you can use your uh, flame flingers a lot better um, definitely do not look at them simply as funneling tools they are much more than that they can do so much so much more for you trust me you probably could have already seen after looking at this video but um, 
uh, that's about it for me for this one if you guys did enjoy this kind of content uh, feel free to give me feedback uh, it can be likes you can subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and um, definitely the most helpful is if you can share it with your fellow clashes give me some exposure that way uh, yeah that's it for me for this one i'll see you guys in the next one peace